Hello, everyone. This is the most magnificent bird, Buckbeak, speaking to you today. And in today's video, I'm back at it with some more Conquest. I'm currently on Conquest 5, and we're going to be starting on Area 42. And before we get started, I hope all of you are doing good and staying safe out there. I'm doing good, and I'm staying safe for the most part. And I don't think we should waste any more time. I think we should go ahead and jump into Conquest, shall we? And we're on the very end of Area 42, actually, so... Yeah, we're going to be moving on to Area 43 as soon as we complete this one. Nice. Hopefully this will be an easy one today. And hopefully it doesn't take too long. Just like that, we're going to be moving on to Area 43, the Baseball Stadium Part 2. I can't, um, I can't exactly remember the exact date this movie comes out, but, you know, since it's February the 2nd, sometime this month, that movie, um, called Snow Bear, that's not the actual name of the movie, but I don't want to say the actual word just because, but anyway, you know, that, uh, that bear, he, uh, eats packets of the snow and yeah he goes uh, on a k crazy killing rampage and honestly I think that movie is gonna be funny good dumb fun I really don't think it's gonna be a movie you are supposed to take seriously I think they're going for that dumb fun funny type of movie and I think it's going to be really great because of that aspect of not taking it serious. And along with the Snow Bear movie, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Yes, you heard me correct. <laughs> a horror movie, a Winnie the Pooh horror movie is supposed to be coming out also sometime this month and I can honestly see people being interested in that just because you know when you think of Winnie the Pooh you don't think of a horror movie normally Winnie the Pooh certainly was no horror movie when I was growing up that's for sure I don't know I, I don't know if I would be interested in a horror Winnie the Pooh movie or not. I mean, I mean, it's certainly, the idea of it is certainly 
Hmm, somewhat interesting, I guess. But I don't know if I would want to, you know, go see it day one or anything like that. Maybe if it was a really, you know, when it's a really cheap rental, it might be worth checking out then. I'm honestly a little bit more interested in checking on uh, watching the Snow Bear movie than I am a horror movie uh, based on Winnie the Pooh. And also, for those that might not know, uh, I think the Snow Bear movie is going to be uh, Ray Liotta's uh, last movie ever because he is in it. And, uh, yeah, like, the bear has eaten his, um, packets of snow, and so I'm sure he wants to kill the bear because of that, right? It's pretty simple. I think it's going to be funny, fun, dumb type of movie. And honestly, I feel like watching something like that. Sure, it might not be the greatest movie ever, but like I said, it's I'm sure it'll be a fun, fun, a fun, funny, dumb movie. And, yeah, I think I'd be a little bit more interested in watching that than a Winnie the Pooh horror movie, you know. So, it's uh, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, I think it is. Poor, poor Eeyore, he's out of the picture. If you watch the trailer, <laughs> you know, uh, R.I.P. Eeyore. Um, I don't want to say what happened to him, but the... Uh, but the people behind the movie, they've already kind of confirmed what happened to Eeyore. And man, it's awful if it's true, which honestly, I do believe it's true. Probably so. And what other movies come out in February? Sorry if y'all heard that uh, snap. I was just opening up a mountain lightning. But let's see. I know the Snow Bear movie comes out, the Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, I think that Ant-Man movie comes out too, I think so, Wh whatever the third Ant-Man movie is called, honestly I just don't think that Ant-Man is going to be all that spectacular, I mean it's an Ant-Man movie at the end of the day. I saw the first two Ant-Man movies, and both of them, honestly, are just okay. The second one is a little better, but honestly, I don't remember even a whole lot about any of the Ant-Man movies, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. And I haven't, like, I've only watched both Ant-Man movies one time. I just don't see them... Or remember them being that rewatchable. So I don't think I'm going to watch this third one. Just because, I don't know, you know. With those uh, Disney plus Marvel TV, uh, TV series that, you know. I'm sure you might have had to watch them to kind of get an understand of whatever's going to happen. In the new Ant-Man movie, and I just, I don't have time for that. Plus, I'm pretty much done with Marvel after Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And then any future Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Although, one movie I would like to watch, and apparently people say it's awful. I still haven't seen it. Maybe I'll get around to it one day is uh, Venom 2. Yeah, I know. I can't believe I haven't watched that one yet. But people say it's bad. I don't know. I'm not sure. I've seen the first Venom and uh, Tom Hardy's uh, you know, his version of Venom is definitely a lot better than uh, Eric Foreman's Venom. That's for sure. I wish it was rated R, Venom that is, but I get why it's not. In case they want to uh, bring Spider-Man, you know, Tom Holland Spider-Man into it eventually. 
I still haven't seen it, that second Venom movie, and I kind of want to because people say it's pretty bad. But I don't know, it might be alright. I'm not sure. Eventually, I'll probably end up checking it out just because uh, for curiosity's sake. So we're going to be moving on to Area 44, the train track. When I was growing up, you know, there was the uh, three Blade movies with uh, Wesley Snipes. Apparently Marvel, they're wanting to make another Blade movie, but this time they want to have it be PG-13. And I'm just like, I think that's like a really bad idea because you're really limiting what Blade potentially could be with a new blade, you know? And, you know, for the younger people that might have not watched any of the Blade movies with uh, Wesley Snipes, those movies are rated R, and with Blade 1 and Blade 2 being, like, some of Wesley Snipes' best movies, or just some of the better... Marvel movies all together, especially with Blade 2 being probably my favorite one. You know, you got the third Blade movie, which is, some of it's good, some of it is meh, but at least they were all rated R, and, you know, that's what Blade should be. It should be rated R. Nothing should hold it back from being what it can be. And with the PG-13 Blade movie, I'm not sure, you know, what's going on with that currently, but that's the last thing I heard about it, is that they want to make this new Blade movie uh, PG-13, and I just, I honestly, I think that's a really bad idea, because you're limiting what kind of uh, vampire gore and all of that you can show, and something like Blade does not have to, and should not be held back because of that and I, I mean who they're picking to be Blade he might be good I mean I don't know but the PG-13 rating is really gonna hurt it it really is people just they don't have any idea honestly I would just say if you want to watch Blade just go back and watch the three at least the first two Wesley Snipes uh, Blade movies. Sure, they're old as the hills at this point, but they're what Blade should, they are what Blade should definitely be, for sure. And then, uh, uh, talking about The Last of Us real quick, um, I remember I said that there was a certain character's backstory that they were potentially going to, uh, change or they were going to expand upon, and, uh, yeah, I was right. I honestly don't get why they gave, uh, Bill, like, the thing about him... He's not that important to The Last of Us 1's story whatsoever. When Joel and Ellie, when they go to Bill's town, 
the main purpose why they're there is they're looking for a running vehicle that way they can you know they can move across the country and Bill is there to help them get a, a car battery that's pretty much his only purpose there in that part of the game but you know and then that other guy that he was uh, romantically involved with Frank you know I like how the game did it because they didn't put a heavy emphasis on it it's briefly mentioned and then it's moved on you know because that part of the game they're just the main part of that game you know the main focus of that part is they're just looking for a car battery that's it it's like that simple but they had to kind of go and change that for the show and no I haven't watched the show I'm not gonna watch the show but that's what I've heard that uh, they dedicate the whole episode to Bill and Frank being in a romantic relationship and that's not something the game did they're putting their own thing on it which I mean they didn't come up with them to having a romantic relationship it is briefly mentioned in the game but they heavily expand upon it and you know why put that emphasis on a character that is never going to be seen again in the show because I mean Bill he might be mentioned one more or two more times throughout the game maybe maybe not I can't exactly remember but we definitely never see him pass Bill's town never again so I just don't I don't understand why they put that emphasis on those two characters uh, relationship they never really did that in the game they just kind of mentioned it uh, Bill says on the long along the lines of Frank was my partner that's it we can make our own assumption as to what that means, you know what I mean? We don't need to see it play out on screen. I gotta tell you, I do not trust Neil Druckmann. No, not, not one bit, not whatsoever. I know a lot of people give uh, Scott M. Gimple a lot of crap and... You know, he didn't know how to write The Walking Dead or anything like that, but I'll say I trust Scott M. Gimple a lot more than I do Neil Druckmann, that, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, that is uh, going to do it for me for today. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and for your continued support, or if you're new welcome in for the first time all of you are very awesome and i thank you again and don't forget to hit the bell and switch on all notifications so you know the second i upload to youtube i am buck beak and i'm gonna go fly away back to my nest until next time bye guys